Hi everyone, this is Ming Yao from Ozen Engineering and this is a demonstration of ANSYS Discovery's CFD capabilities. Um, this is 2024, there's a lot of new capabilities available in ANSYS Discovery CFD, so I thought I'd make a quick video here. Uh, what you see on screen, I'm remotely logging into a workstation with a good GPU and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at some of these features. I'm going to go ahead and import a SOLIDWORKS uh, assembly here. I'll get the simulation started. So here we have a SOLIDWORKS assembly. I'm accessing a remote computer using uh, my web, web browser, which is pretty cool. Uh, one of the main new features in ANSYS Discovery Simulation is now ANSYS Discovery Simulation re includes the refined mode for CFD solvers, which makes it possible to run really good CFD simulations right from the discovery interface, easy to use. So here's uh, this is the internal flow. We're trying to capture the fluid volume inside of this uh, plug valve. So we'll say uh, this is my inlet. So you can see discovery. It's really smart. It automatically recognizes potentially the inlet and the outlet. And we wait a few seconds and it's going to automatically extract that fluid volume. <clears throat> which is super handy because that used to require some manual operations to create. So here's my fluid volume. I can choose to, to hide everything else if I want to. And you can see it did a nice uh, subtraction and got rid of all the solids. This, this part has a whole bunch of, it's a multi-assembly part. So I didn't have to do any sort of merger or cleanup. It just found the fluid volume for me, which is fantastic. Now we can go ahead and click on uh, start adding in some uh, boundary conditions. So let's go ahead and say we, we want to add some flow boundary conditions. So this will be my inlet. I'll give it a one meter per second flow. This will be my outlet. Automatically zero pressure. Uh, the material is liquid automatically. It just applies this material to water and we can use all kinds of materials if we want to. We can edit the properties for the liquid, for viscosity and density. You can see that the density, <laughs> density can be a function of temperature. <coughs> um, and for if I do air, it could be a compressible liquid as well. Uh, that's all I need to do to set up the simulation. Oh, I have, I have a duplicate. So I, I couldn't go ahead with it because it re realized that I, I have duplicate inlets here. So let's go ahead and delete one of these. As soon as I do that, you can see my little run button appears. A couple of, uh, so we can take a look at the mesh. For those of you who are used to doing CFD simulations, you know that mesh, meshing is super important for getting accurate results. So gener generate here a quick mesh and see some of the features for controlling the mesh. Okay, the mesh is created. Uh, we're automatically refining based on curvature. We can also automatically refine due to proximity. You can see there are boundary layers here. The mesh controls uh, are often tied to the type of turbulence models you're using. So under simulation controls here, we have lots of additional controls uh, specifying the type of solver, convergence, specifying modeling methods. You can see that we can choose different types of turbulence models. You can use a uh, Splart Spl 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 Almaris model from Boeing. We can use K Omega standard, K Epsilon or K Omega SST model, which actually allows us to resolve the boundary layer flow in here. Uh, unfortunately, the mesh is not going to be uh, good enough here for me to, to capture the, the boundary layer flow, so we can go ahead and change our settings. <clears throat> there are a lot of options available for settings, but if I click on these three dots here, we can choose to capture based on curvature, proximity, or both. If we do curvature, you can use predefined settings or you can adjust 
the settings. So it tells, it shows you the minimum, maximum size, the growth rate. These are all standard ANSYS simulation. <laughs> See if these simulation defaults. If I'm interested in flow in a particular around a particular region, for example, this area, uh, maybe these two areas as they. Uh, <clears throat> as the flow goes through these areas, I can put some local refinement on it and you can specify a value. So in, uh, let's go with millimeters here. <clears throat> so here we, we put a five millimeter mesh and you can see the, the dot kind of. I don't know if it's showing me what five millimeters is here. I think we go to display and show uh, zoom legend All right, so that's seven millimeters so if i zoom in here i probably want this on the order of two or three millimeters not five let's go back and adjust this to three millimeters okay let's go ahead and generate the mesh again now we have 10 layers of inflation which will allow me to ca capture near wall flows much better it's completely conformal. The mesh will run through the entire model and will have smaller elements on these uh, uh, important areas that I want to focus on. Okay, more refined in the curved areas. And if I look at the, the boundary here, we could, we could make it even finer if we needed to, but I'll leave it as it is for now. So you can see there's all kinds of geometry change capabilities already that exist inside of the solver. The other thing that's really helpful here, a uh, big change, is that you can use a GPU solver or the CPU solver, both of which are the same as that. It's available in Fluent. So um, some other capabilities we have here includes you can put fan, boundary conditions, coarse media, wall, rotating fluid flow, uh, so fans. And, and impellers, and you can also do all kinds of thermal analysis if you wanted to. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to my GPU solver. One of the things that's helpful is to monitor the results. So we can, for example, monitor this surface, and I'll monitor the pressure. So this gives me a, a let's say, we want to do the maximum pressure. So this will have zero pressure over here. If I'm monitoring the mass and pressure, that's a, a pressure drop plot here. And when we run the simulation, it'll show convergence values. Let's go ahead and run the simulation. I should click on that. This will t t show me the pressure conversions as we run the analysis. So this is live, it's using the GPU solver. You can see it's quickly uh, converging to a nice pressure value. It's done 100 iterations already. Now it's done 200 iterations, uh, 300 iterations. So extremely fast, uh, high accuracy CFD solver with great visualization. Uh, more, most importantly, this tool allows us to control the accuracy by adjusting the mesh appropriately and setting up the simulation with the right boundary conditions. Okay. It has these uh, <clears throat> really nice, so let's see, we can hit play. It show me the way the flow comes in here, turns around inside of this area. This is a, uh, a vector plot, by the way. I'll stop that. One of the th so we only ran 300 iterations. We have different convergence values. We can also adjust it. So you can adjust your convergence settings, target numerical convergence, specify meshing methods. We have both uh, tetrahedral and polyhedral meshing, which is great. Polyhedral gives you more resilience towards uh, highly deformed mesh and things like that. Um, so you need to. Oh, because I've changed my conversion settings, it wants to run the simulation again. Luckily, running a simulation in Discovery, especially on the GPU, takes 
like a minute. So uh, just enough time to grab coffee. And you can adjust the conversions, you can run different changes. This plot is showing you the change in pressure from one design to another. So if I was to uh, constrict this, for example, what if my inlet was smaller? So I can do a pull feature and I can just go ahead and change the geometry like that. Let's see if this works. Maybe I get rid of that, take a look at the geometry. Oh, this could be hard to smoothly. Oh, it's doing that, which is not quite what I want. Well, let's say that's a, a lip there that happens. Um, we can hit run, and it'll run the new, mo it'll automatically mesh and run the new model. And you can see everything else I've set is still retained. So you can interactively, I can move the valve up and down, I can make that parametric. I can change the fillet radius, maybe the height of, of this part to see how all of these things affect the, the flow. And it's still meshing. Yeah, I'm used to seeing these uh, pictures where the conversions plus where it shows one at a time, but each tick here is like 10 or 20 iterations. So it's a blazing fast solver. Probably should run it for a little bit longer until it stabilizes, but it's uh, good enough for demonstration purposes here. Okay, so by constricting this, I have uh, lowered the pressure drop quite a bit. Uh, as I was saying, these are vector plots. It's really nice. You can see the, the vector tells you the rotation rather than just the classic vector. If I click on here, uh, there's an option to show not curved vectors, which is kind of the vectors we're all used to in the classical sense. Sometimes the display takes a while to catch up. Oh, there you go. So that, that's the, the straight vectors. And straight vectors are good. Uh, you can scale them according to the size, but curve tells you so much more about how the flow twists and turns. Uh, you can adjust how many vectors there are here. Um, gradient, you can filter by gradient or magnitude, thickness, tail length. You can make them longer or shorter. You know, make make them uh, skinny to, or really thick, depending on what you like to how you like to visualize it. We have all the standard post processing tools. So here is a, you can actually plot multiple things at the same time. So here is a, a picture of the of the velocity, and we can change it from velocity to pressure. And you can look at the pressure drop, uh, minimum, maximum. And you can select particular locations and probe it to find what the pressure is in those areas. Um, we can also do a section plane. Uh, what's interesting about the pressure plot here, if I do that, is that they have this feature, this velocity is a good, good visualization of that, where it shows you the maximum. So when I look through the model, if I'm looking to this point, I can see all the way through the, the part and see where the maximum is. So it gives you kind of this cool uh, 3D visualization of, of how the entire flow looks like, not just like a, a classic surface flow. So really neat 3D visualization. So it's always showing you the maximum as you look through the model. Um, we don't have, I haven't seen plus like this before. It's really nice to show you the the, the flow paths here. Uh, but we, we can also show it, uh, instead of, we're showing it on all faces, we can also show just the outside. 
and this will allow me to do kind of a, a classic section plane. You can see how the flow goes there. And as with everything in space claim, it's really easy to move things around. If I want to rotate this by 90, 90 degrees, I can do something like that. This, this gives you kind of the classic uh, cross-sectional flow. Um, and you can overlap things. So you, I can put a streamline on that. It tells me, it shows me the, the streamlines. I can put an animation of particles. So this is kind of like the lattice Boltzmann type of flow where there's lots of particles that flows through it. Takes a second to, to populate, but you can see the particles starting to, to drift through. And you can control these particles by adjusting the size, animation speed, range. And you can also plot this direction field plot. I'll hide this for now. Um, direction field, we can just kind of grab it and uh, I think move this around. Oh, the, this is the, the, the location. So you can kind of slide it around and look at the way the flow goes through these thin gaps. I think I'm only on only uh, capturing the, the pressure here. Uh, let's try to do a section plane of that, just to show you the inside of the mesh. You can see the mesh gets squeezed automatically, so we have lots of element through the thickness across even small gaps. There's a lot of automation, but you can manually refine the sizes as, ne as needed. So, a quick demonstration of how fast and easy it is to create <coughs> CFD models. In uh, Discovery, the ability to have really nice visualization along with uh, something like that. We can kind of make things really pretty here. Let's, let's thicken it to make it a bit bolder, uh, have some more, and then we can animate the whole thing. Zoom in, 3D effect, viewing different areas, allows you to see how flow can go through certain areas very easily. And this whole thing will just take a few minutes to run. So, uh, fantastic new tool, really new, great capability to control the mesh, lots of physics available, the ability to have advanced turbulence models uh, using the Fluent GPU and CPU solver with uh, lots of convergence control. So, also poly or tetrahedral mesh. So, a lot of advancement in SS Discovery Simulation in 2024. If you haven't seen this already, please uh, let us know, ozeninc.com. We'd be happy to show it to you or discuss uh, how this can be applied to your needs. Anyways, thank you very much for your time and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Have a great day.